In this video, let's take a look at how we can make our virtual guitars that play strummed parts to sound way more realistic. Now, this is a sure telltale of fake or virtual sounding guitars, is where you've written a chord progression and you've quantized the parts so they sit exactly on the grid. So I've got a chord progression that goes from E major to A sus2 and then C major. I spelled out a bit of a rhythm, so I'm just gonna play it back but you're gonna hear how this sounds very artificial. And I've did the chord voicing exactly like I showed in the last video, where I've got the root note, I've got the fifth, and then I've got a triad. And some of the chords, I could add in an extra note. For the E, I could add an extra high E, and so on. So just going through the chords for the E major, it's E, B, E, G sharp, B, and then E. Then for the A sus2, it's A, E, A again, B, and then E. So we've got the sus2 part happening over here. And then finally, we've got C major, which is C, E, G, C, and E. Now C looks slightly different because with a chord shape like this, you're actually able to play the triad over here and then add in some extra notes. So the triad is C, E, G over here, and then we're adding an extra C and then an E. So we're adding in an extra root an octave higher and then the third. But now I wanna show you how you can make your strummed parts sound more real. To do this, what I'm going to do is just copy this clip over here. So I'm just copying it there. I want to go in and I want to extend this beginning because how a guitar works is you strum down and as you strum down, you hit some strings before others. So what we want to do to make the sound way more realistic is to take the notes and move them down as if there's a strum down pattern. Now, to not confuse everything, let's just take all of these other notes over here and remove them. So we're only dealing with the E major. And I'm going to zoom up. So we've got this rhythm over here. I'm gonna take all these notes here and just mute them for now. So all we're hearing is the first strum chord. Now, we're gonna be strumming down. So what you wanna do is you want the sort of last note to be the note that is sitting on the grid and you wanna anticipate the rest. So coming in a bit early, I'm gonna take this note just extend it out, extend these out as well. There's no science to this, I'm just trying to get this downstroke pattern like this. Much better. If I extend this even further, you can make it sound way more exaggerated. So there's a bigger gap between these notes and it gets closer. Very nice. If I go back to what we had before, this is what we had. Doesn't sound very real we can add in that sort of downstroke to the strum, or even accentuate it even more. Now guitar isn't just downstrokes. Normally when you're strumming, you're strumming down and up. So you're gonna go down, up, down, up. So what I'm gonna do is let's do a downstroke for this chord and then an upstroke for this chord, and then a down here again and an up. So going over to this note, I want this note to be where it ends on the grid but I want to anticipate the downward strokes. So what I actually need to do is maybe change the length of some of these as well so that I can make space for that. So I'm gonna take these, unmute them, and pull these notes. Pull them slightly out to create the upstroke. Now that's a bit much, so I'm going to tweak them slightly. So we've got this. Sounding very nice. Continuing on, I'm just gonna take these over here and do a downstroke here. I'd need to tweak the ends of the notes before just to make things longer. And I'm not trying to be anywhere on the grid. I'm just really just trying to make a bit of a sweeping pattern. Then over here, this is going to be up again. So I can take these notes, shorten them, unmute these. 
and then make an upstroke. And we're not trying to lock to any grid. So there we go. We've got a downstroke, an upstroke for that chord, downstroke again, then upstroke. Very nice. So if I go back to playing here, this is what we had before. Then going over here, this is way more real. Going back again. And then here again. So you're getting the idea there. So with your downstrokes and upstrokes, you're getting a way more realistic sounding strum parts on a guitar. Now, as you can see here, my velocities are pretty much exactly the same. So next, what I want to go into is showing you how you can tweak the velocities, especially if the instrument has been sampled with varying degrees of samples for the different velocities, and you can get different sort of timbres and tonalities into each string that'll make the whole chord sound different every time it's played again.